Hello, 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 everyone. I'll just give everyone a second to pop in, and I am getting my laptop set up so that I can read comments if necessary. So, um, how is everybody doing? Um, how did you like Michelle's tutorial yesterday? Well, let's see, I see Lorraine and Bernadette are in, so welcome, thank you. Okay, um, we have, hello Teresa, thanks for joining. Kathy, welcome, welcome. So excited to have you guys all pop in here. So I have um, three little kids and they are uh, in the living room, which is above my craft station. And so you might hear some pitter patter and if you do, please ignore it. Uh, there's not much I can do about it. Uh, I put a movie on for them and my husband's outside doing some yard work. So we're gonna hope for the best on this. All right, let's get started. So today's card is a fun masking card. This is nothing new, um, but it's fun. And so I thought we would come in and do, I'm gonna show you how to do this three different ways, okay? So let's start with some of the basic supplies that we're going to be using. I've already cut down some white daisy cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half. So I've got four bases here to work with. So you'll need one of those for each technique or each time we do this. You'll need three inks that complement each other or go well with each other. And let me zoom this out so you guys can actually see what's going on because I forgot that I had it zoomed in because of my awesome little Facebook live starting soon screen. So three inks that coordinate well. I'm going to use Green Apple, Pixie, and Bluebird. You want masking tape, painter's tape, or washi tape. Basically all the same concept. And you want to just rip them or tear them so they're about a little bit longer than the ink pad that you're working with. And then on mine, I just folded them over so I sort of had a little handle or working tab with them. So I'm gonna show you the traditional way to do this. And then of course, you guys are encouraged, inspired, and more than welcome to, to run with it. And then I'll do the other two. Okay, so. You also want a stamp set. My stamp set that I am going to use with this is called the Mighty Oak. And I'm going to use the tree and the sentiment that goes on the inside. It's technically a scrapbooking stamp set, but I'm gonna make it work for this. Excuse me. Let me get my inks all set up. Leave me a heart or a like if you've done this technique before. I'd love to see how many people are familiar with this um, inspirational piece. Put this one over here and this one here. Hopefully I don't mess them up. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to put our masking tape sticky side right in to our ink pad. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab some scrap paper and put it over top just so that I can really, you know, push it down without getting my fingers messy. Okay, and then I'll just, I'm gonna start at the bottom and smoosh it on to my paper and then I'm very slowly gonna pull it up because I don't want it to rip my paper. Okay, and then if you don't like it or you want something different, do it again. Move your tape around on your pad. You can get different textures from that and you can make it as light as you want depending on how much you push down. So if you just lightly push it down it's going to give you a light. If you um, push it down really hard then you're going to get a lot of color on there. So it's going to kind of go up a little bit. And get the rest of it off there so there's that one i'm going to come in i'm going to do the same thing with the blue and i'm going to leave just a little bit of white space 
between. Hello. Stay down. So this is really fun. Um, this is the traditional way to do it though. And then I'm going to show you a couple of different twists to kind of, I don't know, elevate it, if you will. If my paint, will, or if my tape will stay down. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of space, not a whole lot. Ooh, this is so pretty. And I don't think I'm going to re-ink. There's still ink on there, so I'm just going to come down a little bit. get the rest of it on there. You can definitely use like a glacier. That would be a really nice, pretty blue, light blue. If you wanted to do lighter colors, um, it's total personal preference. And I'm going to come in with my pixie at the end. Probably should get my scrap paper. Like I said, I was going to just kind of push that in. just a little bit more there so that's the traditional way to do it you just basically are smushing your ink in using your tape so we'll finish that off in a second so now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna do it um, a little bit different I'm gonna grab a light tur shade of green so I have this um, sweet leaf. I'm going to fold my ends over so I got my tab. And I'm, I'm going to use my green. My I have my candy apple green and my leaf, my sweet leaf. So just a lighter color. on there okay and I'm gonna leave a little bit of space down at the bottom here when I put this down you know what time out I'm showing you a new te new technique and I forgot how to do it so I've, I've put it in my sweet leaf got this on here now I'm gonna take the edge of this just the edge of it and smush it in that darker shade, right? Just the edge. Now I'm gonna put that down, sorry. Got ahead of myself and I'm gonna smoosh it down. Isn't that cool? So now you have like two levels of grass or you know, whatever your background may be. So I love that, I think that looks really cool. So now, um, put this sweet leaf. Now I want to blend my sky. So I'm going to do blue and a pink, but I'm going to come in with glacier because I want to kind of get that purple like effect. As soon as I well. I was going to come in with Glacier. I had everything set up. And of course it walks away, right? Walks away because I want to use it. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, you guys. Well, I'm sure I'm not the first one to ever do this. There it is. Ah. See, I had it all set up. So this, uh, this one I have washi tape, which works just the same. So I'm going to come in with this. I like using the paper because then I can really get that ink on there and it's not so much worrying about my fingers but I really can um, get it on there good it's a little harder to see on camera that one I'm not gonna do the two-tone with my ink blend 
just yet. I'm going to come in. I'm going to keep Pixie. I'm going to come in with my Pixie and really just kind of burnish that in and get my ink on there. And then I'm going to see where it is. I'm going to overlap it into the blue, but not press super, super hard. Okay. I'm going to come back with my glacier. Just like so. I'm going to go right on top of my pixie. I'm just trying to fade these into each other. Okay, and now I'm going to do my pixie again up here. It'll come together, trust me. Trust me. Yes, I agree, Teresa. This would make a great base page background. So if you're a scrapbooker, um, it would take a little bit of time, but definitely would be worth it. So my ink on there, and I'm not gonna press down like a whole lot, just a little bit, okay? And then I can move it, because I still have got ink on here, and then I can move it around and then it kind of helps move the color down. And then the last one I'll really push down and get it in. And now I can come back in with that glacier and kind of really play with this and blend those two colors in. Yeah, it's a little bit of work. I think it's fun. I think it's different. And it really comes together in the end when we put um, the images on. So I'm really gonna try to transfer most of that ink that I can. Let's see if I can get some more on there. Back down. There. Okay. I'm pretty happy with where that's gonna go. So I'm just gonna give it a second to dry, and I'm gonna put it over to the side so we can finish off with our tree stamping. And I'm gonna show you the last really cool thing that you can do with this. So grab your spray pen or whatever mechanism you have, make sure you get some water in there. Ink up your masking tape. Get it good and inked. Now, isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm gonna kind of move some of this off to the side because once I spray this, it's gonna splatter. Literally, bring this back over. That wasn't even, but it's all right. And then look how cool that looks. And then you can still reuse this. There's still ink on it, right? But it gives a whole another feel to it. It really mutes it. I'm going to do the blue and the pixie again. Uh, bluebird. It really mutes it and kind of, or not mutes it, it really just, yeah, it kind of softens it down. I love that. I think that's so cool. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for joining. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Just going to spray I'm just gonna kind of get a little close to it. Don't need a whole lot. You can work it down. And I'm not like pushing it down, making it super, super um, pressure. I'm just lightly doing it. Look how cool that is. I love that. Um, the blue that I'm using for this might not show up so well when I go to do my stamping later, but that's okay, We can I can play with it. I might turn it around and do a completely different stamp with it later. 
I'm, but I am going to show you what a finished product looks like. Okay. I'm put this back on the blue. Come in with my pixie. I'm going to do the same thing. The texture that it gives is pretty cool. I'm going to try and not spray. It's not easy to control it. Not do as so much of as a dark spray for it. And I could even come in with another color. Oops, and I smooshed that right on out. So there you have it. All right. So there's our three ways. So this one we kind of, this is traditional. You just transfer your ink and smoosh it on. This one you're using water on top of your masking tape. And then this one is where we're kind of blending and doing a two-tone effect with our inks. So let's see what it looks like as a card. I'm going to shut some of these up because I know if I don't shut these, something's going to get inked on. So in my sample card that I played with and kind of got a feel for what I was doing, um, I did it in toffee and glacier and then this was a toffee ink. So today I'm going to do it in black just for a different feel. And this was traditional. I didn't do anything spectacular or and try anything different with that. So I am using my stamp positioner because it's what works for me. And I've already got it set up. So I'm going to use this as grass and then my, of course, my sky and all of that good gravy stuff. I'm going to ink it up with black ink. And if it doesn't come through the first time, then I'll do it a couple more times. And then the center of the tree, I have a couple of uh, sentiments that I can use. So you're not supposed to have to do CPR with this, but unfortunately I do. And I'm going to do it one more time. I really want it to be nice and vibrant. And when I put my sentiment in the center, it'll, kind of, it'll fill that in. It'll look so pretty. Don't mind my work sweatshirt. <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh, that turned out so nice. So I have two options. I can put a sentiment in that says, Mighty from Little Oaks, Acorns Grow. Or I can do... The greatest oak was once a little nut who held its ground. So I think these are, um, while it's a stamp, scrapbooking stamp set, I think honestly this works really great for a card for encouragement or, you know, somebody that's overcome maybe an obstacle or a challenge that they've had. So this is a great, I think, to think about it that way. So I'm just going to leave it right on here and stamp. Oops, there we go. So now I am ready to trim this down and put it on my base. Or I could even make this look like a PML card for a scrapbook page, because that would be really cute too. So I'm really excited to see um, what you guys are gonna come up with this. I'm gonna do one more, just because I think it's fun and I've got everything out and you're here watching and talking. Right? You got a hitchhiker. I really am into the bluebird right now. So I am making him work on every project that I can come up with. Him in black don't always stamp well. Ooh, it would be really cool now that I'm thinking about it to white emboss this on these dark colors like this. A white embossed ink would be really, really fun. Okay, so we'll grab this in. And I really like how this one turned out with that two tone. It kind of really, um, and I could have kind of went a little bit higher. I really like that. That came out really nice. All right, straight down, straight up. Try not to rock it. Beautiful. So it's ready for some shimmer or some sequins or cut down. 
PML card, whatever. And I think this one, I'm not going to stamp on this. I think I'm going to use this with a different stamp set. Um, but I want to wait for it to dry because it's still pretty wet from the water being sprayed on it. Um, so I'll post this later on today once it dries, my creation that I get with this. So this was my inspiration for you guys today. I, will, I cannot wait to see if you guys use it on a page, if you guys use it on a card, if you use it however. So have fun with this technique and I'll get an album up pretty soon. Then I'll be back on Thursday to show some other inspirational idea for you to be crafty that day. So catch me on Thursday. It'll probably be around the same time. And then Saturday, don't forget to pop in and join us on Zoom. We'll do another live crafty virtual crop thing where we just get together. Michelle and I will post a pattern and then we all just work together to do the pattern. It's not necessarily a tutorial. It's just getting together, letting loose, chit-chatting, getting to know one each other and just crafting. And then on Sunday, Michelle and I will be back with a dual project that we'll, both of us will do together for you. It'll be pre-recorded. That way you can um, work on it on your leisure and still uh, enjoy time with your friends and family. Well, the best way that we can now. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining in and I will see you on Thursday.